Oh my goodness. It's so good to be here with you all today. Thank you so much, Dave, for inviting me. Wow. And, uh, and so, you know, for the month of August at Awakening Ways, we have been exploring nature. And today the topic was uh, water and water is life. And so I was wondering what you all think of when you hear that word water. You can put it in the chat since we're on Zoom, but what comes up for you as soon as you hear the word water? Now, I heard this morning a lot of people say things like renewal and life and hydration and that quenching of the thirst. And yes, I see cleansing and purification flow and I think of oceans and rivers and lakes. Oh, and somebody put in emotional reaction. Yeah. Yeah, it's all great. And so water is just such a huge part of our daily life. But how often do we really stop to honor and bless the water that we are using. And so if you think about it, there is water everywhere, right? And from the beginning of time, humans have settled around lakes and rivers and seas, areas that could actually support life. And it's actually been estimated that 80% of the world's population lives within 60 miles of an ocean, lake or river. And over half a billion people owe their entire livelihood directly to water. Can you imagine that? And two thirds of the global economy is derived from activities that involve water. So also approximately a billion people rely primarily on water based sources for protein. It's a little uh, info session here. <laughs> All the things we didn't know about water. Now we use water for so many things, right? Drinking, cleansing, uh, we use it for working. Uh, some of us are into water sports. I know I like to swim and so I spend time at the pool and then there's kayaking and then there's our food and how do we make our coffee? Are there any coffee drinkers? <laughs> oh yeah, all of it, right? And so, oh my goodness, we use water for washing. We take showers and baths and hot tubs and on and on. But did you know that it's also estimated that each person in the United States uses 80 to 100 gallons of water every day for basic needs? That's a lot of water, isn't it? That is a lot of water. So, the call for us today is to really be present to our use of water and to bless the water that we're using and bless it every time we use it you know whether it is for washing dishes or making coffee drinking coffee drinking water etc so i'm going to take you on a little journey now our ancient ancestors actually came out of the water they evolved from swimming to crawling to walking and human fetuses actually still have gill slit structures in the very early stages uh, of development. And we spend our first nine months of life immersed in the watery environment of our mother's womb. Now the brain is also made up of 80% water. So that's fascinating. In its mineral composition, the water in our cells is comparable to that found in the sea. So let me rewind a little bit. Yes, I said <laughs> human fetuses still have gill slit structures in the early stages of development. And as it happens, you know, human embryos do have these slits in their necks that look like gills. Now, this isn't because we are part fish right? Or we go through a fish stage when we are in our development in our mother's wombs, but it's really that we share DNA with fish. There are some shared DNA strands with fish, right? So with that in mind, 
Remember, water is essential for our health and necessary for bodily functions and, you know, like temperature regulation, cellular function and other things. And clean water is actually a vital ingredient for our survival. Now, I love what Alan Watts observed. He said, you didn't come into this world. You came out of it like a wave from the ocean. And so we are not strangers here. We actually came from the earth. And this is so powerful for me to remember. It's not like uh, somebody dropped us off on earth and then <laughs> and then took off, right? We are actually of the earth. And so it's a beautiful thing to really get and understand this level of um, connection that we have to the earth and water. So the average human body is 70% water. Now we start out life uh, by being 99% water. And then when we're born, we're about 90%. And by the time we reach adulthood, we are around 70%. Now, if we live to an old age, we may end up with about 50% water. Uh, maybe when we're, you know, late 90s or so. And uh, we mostly exist as water throughout our lives, though. Isn't that amazing? Now, if we lose 50% of the water in our bodies, we can no longer maintain life. So water is also responsible for carrying uh, blood and um, water is actually sorry carried by the blood and by our bodily fluids and that's how nourishment is circulated within our bodies and the flow of water enables us to live active lives so water is really the transporter of energy throughout our bodies water also circulates the globe flowing through our bodies and spreading to the rest of the world isn't that amazing to consider so if we could actually read the information that is contained in the memory of water, we would read a story of epic proportions. So to understand water is to really understand the cosmos, the marvels of nature and life itself. And so that's the science portion. <laughs> it's like, what does this have to do with anything, right? So. Uh, Actually, there's more uh, science in this, too, because now uh, I, I went on this journey of water, you know, and I discovered that I could really probably do a whole month on water from the cleansing and the purification to, uh, you know, the water of life that Jesus spoke of and all of that. So what I was drawn to, though, was Dr. Masaru Emoto. I'm sure you've all heard of him. He had his first appearance in What the Bleep Do We Know, which seems like it was maybe 20 years ago now. I don't remember, <laughs> but it's been a while. And uh, he is a or he was a Japanese author and pseudoscientist who performed studies to prove that human consciousness actually influences the molecular structure of water. Now, he was influenced by something that he learned in kindergarten, which was no two snowflakes are exactly the same. And so he wondered if that same thing was true for molecules of water. And how could he determine that other than by freezing the, the water and then looking at them through a microscope? And what he discovered was so amazing and powerful. So he actually learned that water could copy information and that was life changing for him. And he made this discovery in America and then brought it back to Japan and used the information copying function of water to help people recover their health. So his early experiments were with music and he took a water bottle and basically set it in between two speakers and then uh, played some beautiful classical music at the regular sound that you or I would listen to music. And then he froze the water and then he looked at it through his microscope. 
And what he discovered was that Beethoven's pastoral symphony with its bright and clear tones resulted in a beautiful, well-formed crystal. And Mozart's 40th symphony was a graceful prayer to beauty, created crystals that were so delicate and elegant. And the crystals formed by exposure to Chopin's Etude in E Op 10 number three surprised them with their lovely detail. So all of the classical music that they exposed the water to resulted in these beautiful, well-formed uh, crystals with distinctive characteristics. Yes, the hidden messages in water, Masaru Emoto. And so that was a beautiful thing. And now he wanted to check out uh, the contrast, you know, so, okay, so this is producing this. Now, what if I play some heavy metal music? And so like some kind of thrash metal or something, I don't listen to that stuff. If you do, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> but he played it and and then froze that water and then looked at the crystals through microscope. And what happened was they were fragmented and malformed at best. And so then he thought, well, what if I were to experiment with words? For instance, what if I wrote uh, phrases like thank you and wrapped it around a water bottle and let it sit and infuse that gratitude for some time? And then he wrote the word fool on another piece of paper and wrapped it around a water bottle as well. And again, he had some amazing findings. So he discovered that, uh, well, actually he thought it was interesting and he didn't really know if that was going to work. Like can water actually read words, but obviously it's the energy being put into the water. You know, it's not, it's like the vibration of the words, you know? And so the water that was exposed to thank you also formed beautiful hexagonal, uh, crystals. But the water that was exposed to the word fool produced crystals similar to when the um, water exposed to the heavy metal. And so he continued with his experimentation and this was in America and then he went back to Japan and uh, and he continued to experiment and one of his most favorite uh, experiments, though, and photographs was the one that contained love and gratitude he felt that that really created like this flower in bloom type of crystal and he was so taken by that he knew that he was on to something and we know that he was on to something too don't we so <laughs> uh so when he went back to japan there were some people in japan who had read a magazine that had some of his experiments listed and they said well we're going to try this experiment at home and so they took jars they had two jars and in one jar there was uh some rice with water and then another jar exactly the same rice with water and then one of the jars they wrote the word thank you and then on the other jar they wrote the word fool you fool and then they separated the two all in the same environment everything all the ingredients exactly the same and then for the next 30 days they spoke to each jar and uh and the families did including the children you know they'd come home and they'd go to the one jar and say thank you and then the other jar and say you fool and after 30 days they discovered something profound again so the jar that had thank you written had just like slightly fermented rice it was a little bit yellow and didn't have this terrible smell but the one that said you fool on it had turned black and was beginning to rot and that is so amazing so they reported their findings back to dr masaru emoto and he was very interested in these experiments and then another family conducted a similar experience but the experiment but they added a third jar and the third jar was just totally ignored and it ended up being that that third jar that was totally ignored ended up rotting 
before the one that was uh, called the fool even turned black. And so the point in that is, wow, that makes you think about what areas of my life have I not been paying attention to or not been um, wanting to look at or things that have just been neglected, you know? And so it turns out that when we neglect things, it seems that that is an even more destructive thing than uh, being negative or speaking negatively to them. So these are so powerful. And Dr. Emoto decided that he was going to take this and put it in uh, his next book. And so he did that. And now it's just so fascinating for me, right? So if human consciousness influences the molecular structure of water and the average human body is 70% water, then uh, what are we what are we creating and nurturing with the words that we say to ourselves and others, right? And that means, you know, if you're on the freeway, someone cuts you off. Many of you live in the Bay Area, so I know that the, <laughs> there's got to be some frustration over there, you know. I know you have to plan your day around when you're going to be traveling. <laughs> and then uh, if you end up getting upset and you actually express that anger, you know, you get mad, someone cuts you off. It's not affecting the other person in any way. It's only affecting us. And so when we use these harsh words or uh, have these negative feelings and speak it into the world, we're actually affecting the molecular structure of the water in our bodies we're 70 percent water so we each have this power to shift our reality by changing our thinking our thoughts our words to ourselves and to others so i know we're all ready to do this and now i realize that uh, this is a very fundamental topic and very good to return to at least once a year in my opinion so Ernest Holmes actually observed that just as water purifies itself as it flows, so the impure stream of our mental life becomes purified by applied constructive thinking. It may well be the lack of circulation in the physical body is a result of mental stagnation, while mental stagnation is the result of a lack of spiritual perception. That's a long quote. So just as water purifies itself as it flows, so the impure stream of our mental life becomes purified by applied constructive thinking. So when you think about that, that is part of the Eightfold Path, right? In Buddhism, uh, right mindfulness, and, and that is really right thinking. And so if we want to purify our minds, we can do that. We have the power to do that. And we do that by being in connection and close contact with the God of our understanding. And so um, through prayer and meditation and our walk with nature, you know, and commuting, communing with water, not commuting, <laughs> but you will get to a place where the commute is like no big deal because you are one with the one and you know it and you feel it, you know? And so right mindfulness. And as we are able to purify our minds with right thinking, so are we able to purify our bodies with water. And remembering that there is 70% water within us. I mean, if you think about it for a moment, that is so amazing. And it's so amazing that Dr. Emoto has done this powerful work to study uh, the changes and transformations that can occur uh, just through loving affirmations and powerful words. And it reminds me of how important it is uh, what our mental atmosphere is and what that whole atmosphere is around us. You know, what are you talking to your friends about, your friends with about, what do you kind of music are you listening to? What shows are you watching? 
all of these conversations and everything that's coming into your being is actually affecting the structure in your body, that molecular structure of the water in your body. And so for anyone who is feeling less than healthy um, or challenged in some particular area, you know, it's like, think about how you can actually affirm the thing that you desire to experience in your life and and by uh infusing your water with that i know there has to be so many of you who take either a pill for something whether it's a prescription drug or um, an over-the-counter drug or maybe you take supplements or maybe you use essential oils all right whatever it is herbs uh homeopathic remedies you know it's the same idea right so we can infuse the water that we are going to drink with the words of affirmation that we want to experience for ourselves in our lives drink that water and and know that as that water makes its way through our bodies, it is actually flowing through our blood and hydrating our cells. And it's carrying those words with it to every single cell. How cool is that? And so that is how Dr. Masaru Emoto helped create healing in the lives of so many. What a magnificent dude, I'm telling you. So, I just love that. Now I want to um, I want to share with you a little spiritual practice that I invite you to do every night before bed if you feel called to do so. And that is the practice. I'm going to grab my glass. You're going to get a glass of water. This is a fancy glass from uh, the Madonna Inn in San Luis Obispo. <laughs> It's like the chalice of truth. And so you're going to have your glass of water and you're going to say these words. I am, I am, I am. I am that I am. I am, I am, I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. I am, I am, I am, I am that I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. I am, I am, I am, I am that I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. I am, I am, I am, I am that I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. I am, I am, I am, I am that I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. I am, I am, I am, I am that I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. I am, I am, I am, I am that I am. I have come here to experience peace. God has sent me here to experience peace. And then you will speak your name aloud seven times. So for me, Elizabeth Raleigh Hogue, 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 and then drink the water. And know that that water is doing such amazing work in your body. Now you can simplify that and just change it to like, I am peace and say, I am peace seven times and then your name seven times. Or you can just say peace seven times and then your name seven times. 
and it could be whatever it is that you're wanting to experience and create for yourself in your life, whatever you want to be open to and uh, affirm. So I chose peace because honestly, it seems like everyone could use a little peace right now, right? <laughs> and uh, it may be wholeness or bliss or prosperity or perfect, vibrant health, whatever that is for you. And you can use that to have that experience. And so friends, every one of us can experience the wonder of water every day by bringing mindfulness to our daily activities, like drinking a glass of water. And so you have that special practice at the end of the day before you go to sleep at night, you have that practice. But throughout the day, as you take a drink of water, you can just say like, oh, bless or thank you and and feel that gratitude washing down through your body and doing great work. And so uh, you can also be very mindful while you're bathing, appreciating the water and appreciating uh, the plants that are around you and enjoying the rivers and the lakes and the beaches, all of it, all of the good. Enjoy all of the water. You're going to have an amazing experience of water this week. I just know it. And so uh, we do homework assignments, you know, at my spiritual center. And so one of those is or was to watch the movie, The Hidden Messages of Water, and to commune with the divine through water each day this week uh, in the shower, in the pool, uh, in the bathtub, visit a lake, a river, a stream, and just connect with the water and take a moment and remember that the water is a part of you and that you have come from the water. So powerful. And so lastly, I am again so grateful to have been here with you today and I appreciate this wonderful opportunity and will you join me now in turning your attention inward? Ah, take a deep breath with me. And relax into that presence, that space, which is the space of pure love within. This is the space where I know and remember with every fiber of my being that spirit is all that there is. It is all that there ever was and it is all that there ever will be. And I'm so grateful in this moment to know that the presence of spirit has birthed me and each one of us into existence on the planet at this time. And it has birthed us into existence to experience a life that we love. And so whatever is going on in our lives right now, whatever situations, conditions or experiments, experiences that we are having in the external world, I know that we remember each one of us, the power and the presence of the truth that lives within us at all times. And so knowing that the kingdom of heaven is right where I am, I know that I can come out of this prayer and be shown the finished kingdom through which I walk. And part of that declaration includes affirming the truth every moment possible. And that includes affirming the truth, even when I'm drinking my water or taking my bath. And as that becomes a, a process and a routine and it becomes a habit for me, I know that I begin to tune into spirit constantly. And there is nothing that can take me off of my center based in truth and love and harmony and joy. And so thank you spirit for the water of life, for the water that is life, for the water that is within us and that makes up a huge amount of our brains. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for water on hot days. I'm so grateful for the water that nourishes our bodies. And I am especially grateful for the water of the spirit, which nourishes our souls. 
God is so good, and I am so grateful as I release this prayer, knowing it is so, and so it is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Elizabeth. That was beautiful. <laughs> this talk made me think about uh, the, the molecules in water. Now, whether you, whether you actually believe in, in what uh, Masuro uh, Emoto did or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, because the truth of we are energetic beings and energy, the energy of our thoughts will affect the vibration of all things. All things are vibration. Then water is affected. We are affected. And so water is a, is, is a sacred spiritual medium for, um, as Elizabeth be so beautifully described. And I'll just say one more thing. It reminded me of the molecules in water have been around since time immemorial, I like to say. And they say that this water has circulated. So every molecule um, that you drink has circulated around the world that has touched the lips of Jesus, Siddhartha, Muhammad, Moses, you, you know, all beings. And it's, it's, it's so wonderful to think of that too. And it's all yours. All right, welcome you guys. It's so good to be here. I'm so excited to pray and meditate with you this afternoon. So we'll start with just some lead into meditation and a little bit of stillness and we'll come out of the stillness with some prayer. So if it feels right to you and comfortable for you, just allow your eyes to close. And we take these first few moments just to maybe check in with ourselves, just notice what's going on in our body, what's going on in our consciousness. And just beginning the process of observing. And then maybe taking a moment to tune into your breath. and noticing where your breath sits in your body. Maybe the length of your inhales, the length of your exhales. Are they the same? Are they different? Just practicing observing without trying to change anything. Just simply, simply allowing ourselves to be exactly as we are. And so during our meditation, a few moments of stillness, you can use coming back to your breath as a tool for refocusing your attention. As an alternative, you can use a quality of the spirit like love or peace, joy, harmony. And you say that word slowly to yourself and allow the vibration of that quality to bring you back into the present moment. And so we take a few moments to just simply be in the stillness, be open, be available, re be receptive together, to commune with the one source, the one light of all that there is God. And so we just allow ourselves to open to this presence. And we take a few moments of stillness now together. With every breath, we feel ourselves pulled closer to the truth of our being. We feel ourselves come in closer contact with the eternality of our life.
noticing where is your attention. In the stillness is where we hear the voice of God as our life. We remain open and available. So as we begin to close out the stillness part of our meditation, we move into prayer together. We allow our hearts to open to gratitude and thanksgiving for our very life, for this community, for God, for all that there is. Just knowing that there is only one life, one presence, one power, and that is the love of spirit, the love of God which connects us all, that there is nothing outside of this one source. That we are the divine thread of life that has been placed within us. And just knowing this truth, I bless this service. I bless each and every individual who is joining this service now or listening to this service at another time. Knowing that right where we all are, this divine nature is. There is no place, no part of our being where this divine nature is not. That every cell, every organ, every action, every function of our being is God. And so I bless Reverend Elizabeth, knowing that right where she is right now, the most divine right action is happening through her, that the voice of God moves through her, that it falls on receptive ears, that we are open and available to receive this message today, in gratitude, I bless this church, this community, knowing that it has all of its needs met even now. Even now. And that everything is moving smoothly through the service. And that as each and every one of us listens and becomes more available, more willing during the service, we are all up-leveled in our consciousness becoming more and more and more and more of who we truly came here to be. And so for this community, for Reverend Elizabeth, for David, for all of our service team and each and every one who came today, I am so grateful. I'm grateful for this prayer being answered even now. 
and simply I say, and so it is. Amen. Amen.